Um, so I, I'd like to just start, and, and I, I, I like to kind of put forward these, these questions really um, for, for everybody. Uh, Mr. Chairman, you mentioned, you know, kind of the elephant in the room here, right, which is what's on what you mentioned, what's on everybody's mind. We uh, have a, a system that I think has been kind of the wonder of the world in many ways. And um, we, it's very clear that we have countries that uh, don't share our interests, particularly with regard to open internet freedom, Russia, China. And I'll be a little bit more frank and a little bit more blunt. Uh, I think we have an administration that, with all due respect to what, what has been said, has not been very adept at um, global negotiations on some of the key strategic interests to the country, of which an open internet, to me, is one. Um, and we have the Chinese and the Russians and others who seem very, very determined on this issue. As you know, they just put forward another proposal last month that looks to be very focused on um, gaining more control over the internet. And um, again, I worry that we're just going to continue to backpedal the way we have in other areas, like the Iran ne negotiations going on right now, um, particularly with a determined group of countries. So, you know, I, I guess I, I just want to start with some basic questions. You know, um, Mr. Strickland, you, you, I think you mentioned um, one government having a unique role wasn't the plan. So I'm assuming you're referring to the United States. Yes, sir. So is there a problem with one government having a unique role, particularly when that government has done a fantastic job? Um, it goes to the broader issue. If there's not a problem, what are we trying to fix here? And I'm not, I'm not sure I'm convinced by your, hey, we were going to transition in 1998, but 9-11 happened, and holy cow, we waited for 15 years. I think we waited for a long time because we didn't see that there was a problem. So I, I'd be very interested in what is the problem? And then finally, there's been a lot of articles in the paper, very concerned about this, I certainly am. But one of those has actually raised a very important issue that I'd also like you to address is your legal authority to do this. Again, another issue with this administration I have a problem with is taking action um, where you have no legal authority. Under the Constitution, the Congress has the power to transfer federal government property. ICANN is federal government property, is valuable property. And I don't think you've been authorized by Congress to take this action yet. So I know I've thrown a lot of questions out to you, but um, I feel free to all of you please jump in on these on these questions. So, Thank so, you. So let me start with your second question, which is that there is no government property that is the subject of this contract. All the contract does is designate ICANN to perform the IANA functions. They were given no assets of the United States with which to perform uh, these functions. The, the domain name file is Is there a Commerce Department legal opinion on this issue? Yes, there is, sir. Can we see that? Um, I'll take that back. I'm not in position today to say yes or no, but I will take your request. Because I think a lot of people would dispute what you're saying right now on that issue. Well, I, I think the GAO agrees with us as well, based on a study that they did back in 2000 when they looked at this question. Um, but the fact of the matter is all the contract does for which we receive no compensation. ICANN pays nothing uh, to the United States for this. Um, it simply designated them to perform a role that until 1998 was being performed in the United States government. So the question was, how do you take this function and now have it performed by somebody outside of the government? How about the issue of what's the problem? This has gone, this is done very, very well under a unique government role, our government, our country, a lot of people don't have a problem with this in this country. What's the problem we're trying to fix? Well, there has been a problem, sir. Um, at the end of 2012, when the world's governments got together in Dubai for the ITU um, uh, wicket, the World Conference on International Telecommunications, you had um, around 80 countries who, d who voted uh, to say the ITU needs to be more involved in Internet governance. And these were largely countries in the developing world who were siding with the more authoritarian regimes. Part of the impetus for this is, was, at that time, the continued irritation that many governments feel, and which has been exploited by the authoritarian countries, 
that the United States, with this special role with ICANN, um, is in a position to control the Internet in these developing countries and to turn it off in these countries and to otherwise interfere with the ability of countries to uh, manage their own affairs with respect to the Internet. Um, after this announcement was made, the next two large international meetings at which governments came together, you saw a, a major change in position among the developing countries. We didn't see any change in the position of the authoritarian countries, and you're not. They're not going to change their views on this. But the key to succeeding in this on the global stage is to bring the rest of the world along with us, and that's what we saw at the Net Mundial conference in Brazil last April, where the only countries who spoke out in opposition to the multi-stakeholder model of Internet governance were Russia and Cuba. Um, we then fly, fast forward to the ITU plenipotentiary conference in Busan last November, and again, you had Russia with the same proposals it's been making for 10 years, that this, these functions ought to be transferred to the ITU and managed by governments, and that was beaten back in a coalition of both developed and developing countries. So we have seen immediate results, or, or significant results, by the basis of art having been able to take this issue off the table for these countries to get them to look at what's really best for them without this overhang of a U.S. A role that was unique among governments and which was a source of irritation to governments and which was being exploited to our detriment by foreign governments. The fact of the matter is that the role we play with respect to the IANA functions is a clerical role. It's truly stewardship. As I said before, we don't provide any oversight of the policy judgments that ICANN and the multi-stakeholder community make. We participate as a government in the Government Advisory Committee, and we will continue to do that in the future, and we'll be vigorous advocates for a free and open Internet. But the specific role we play with respect to the IANA functions is, is totally administrative and clerical. Yet it has been exploited by other governments, authoritarian governments, to our detriment. We've taken that off the table by announcing the transition, and as we complete it, uh, we will continue to see the benefits of that through the continued adoption and support for this model by the developing world. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would just the, the questions I uh, proposed, I know we didn't get to them, but I would uh, ask that they be submitted for the record so the other witnesses have the opportunity to uh, answer those as well. Without objection. 